let us all that we can to build a better future. So, our permanent house guest, Zelensky, came knocking on the door asking for more money. Boy, oh boy, can our Congress shit out the money for this guy. I mean, honestly, I, I, am, I am thoroughly impressed with how quick Congress will be like, you need some money? Oh, here you go. Think about it. Zelensky is that uh, freeloading cousin that your grandma just likes to give money to all the time, even though you know that money's going to go to something else. You know, he's that freeloading relative that everyone gives money to. It's just like, you know where that money's going to go. <sighs> I did a sniffing. I didn't say anything. I didn't in insinuate anything. But my goodness. So I got this article here from The Hill. Uh, hey, and since I'm hosting the show solo, I get to be a little crazy today. So there you go. All right. Hashtag, where's Lady? Only she can, she can stop the madness. So apparently uh, Zelensky helps Pelosi exit the house in historic fashion. I wonder if he sprayed any uh, Febreze because you got to get that old lady stank out the uh, out the House of Representatives, right? I'm, I'm being mean. I'm being mean. That, that was mean of me to say that. I shouldn't have said that. I don't care. Speaker Nancy, Nancy Pelosi, Nancy is ending her long leadership tenure with a historic force wrapping up not one but two decades at the top of the party with a string of major victories. <laughs> wow, holy shit. What, what are you talking about? Political, legislative, and diplomatic that are putting a remarkable cap, because that's cap, right, on a landmark era. This week alone, House Democrats have released the tax records of former President Donald Trump following a years-long legal battle. Who the hell cares? You know, Trump was up front when he told the American people, hey, you're being screwed over. And when the press asked him, how do you know that? Because I've used it. The system's rigged against you. I've used it. Trump didn't design this nightmare and these loopholes that the rich can take advantage of. He didn't design it. Now, of course, he got elected president. But mind you, there was a time before Trump became president. Now, gee, I wonder, did Nancy Pelosi and her fantastic freaking friends design the economic and political landscape that we're living in that allows parasites like Donald Trump to take advantage of it? Well, yeah, they most certainly did. So who cares? Hey, chat, audience, to live stream chat. Type one if you really do care about Trump's tax records. Like, it's the most important thing ever. And you just feel vindicated. Type two if you don't give a rat's ass. They wrapped up their marathon investigation to last year's capital attack, which, uh, yeah. I feel like slapping all those rioters because you know what? When they went inside Nancy's office, her laptop was right there. And I'm like, you it's like that scene from Breaking Bad, right? When uh Walter is confronting Jesse, saying, you know, you were in his house, you could have poisoned him. You were in her office, you could have took that laptop. There were so many things left open for all you idiots. Put me in the game, coach. Give me a legion. I can get things done. I can get things done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes the, the political movements in this country and the lackluster action that we see that I've seen in these past decades from those on the left and the right is downright pathetic. Because honest to God, like they, they always get curb stomped by the establishment. It's just it's 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 incredible. Then people go right back to voting team red or team blue. And so continuing on and they're poised to pass a massive $1.7 trillion federal spending bill packed full of Democratic priorities, oh, such as including legislation designed to ensure a peaceful transfer of power between presidents. Okay. And a push that came to direct response of January 6th, whatever. Those were just expected developments. Congress on Wednesday, hey, folks, I'm pretty sure you all saw this. Congress on Wednesday also played host to history-making address by Ukraine's president, Vladimir Zelensky, after a surprise visit, it wasn't a surprise, to Washington, D.C., a stunning demonstration designed to shore up U.S. support for Kiev amid Russia's long-running long invasion. Any one of those items on its own would have been a significant triumph in a brief lame duck session following the midterm elections that will put Republicans in charge of the lower chamber next year. The combination is something else entirely constituting an extraordinary and highly consequential string of wins for Pelosi 
and the Democrats. What wins? What are you talking about? People are still starving. Small businesses are being shut down. People are being evicted from their homes and apartments. Notice how they're covering all that. Plus, we're, he we're heading into an economic recession, dare I say, a depression. Just weeks before, she steps out of power after 20 years and passes the torch to a younger generation of party leaders that have no balls, no heart, no spine, no soul. There you go. The 117th Congress has been the most consequential in recent history, she wrote to fellow Democrats this week. Hold on. Hold on. Gotta be Nancy. The 117th Congress has been the most consequential in recent history. There you go, sport. She wrote to fellow Democrats this week, taking a victory lap. She added that the lame duck agenda has them leaving a strong note. Zelensky in particular carried outside significance. The Ukrainian president has since, has since the Russian invasion began in February emerged as a global symbol of democratic defiance. The crew at the convo couch will say something different. RBN will say something different. Jimmy Dore will say something different. In the face of violent authoritarianism, uh, President Russian President Vladimir Putin, corporate media's cartoon villain. And having him on hand in the capital itself, the target of anti-democratic mob last year, gave a big boost to the warnings from Democrats that America's election systems and other democratic institutions are under attack. Not at least from Trump's false claims that the 2020 election was stolen, even though Twitter files are showing that the FBI was involved in censoring and suppressing information, not only on Twitter, but Facebook and, dare I say it, maybe on other social media platforms, too. See what I mean? When big tech, corporate media, and the two-party system are working together? I mean, honestly, if you're a diehard Democratic voter or a diehard Republican voter, come on, it, it, explain to me why it's important that your team really represents freedom or why you watching Fox informs you or you watching CNN makes you smarter. Don't you get it? It's a big club. And you ain't in it because they don't respect you. Pelosi had staged a surprise trip to Ukraine earlier in the year, found a special importance in Zelensky's visit, noting that her father, Thomas DelSandro Jr. was a House member in 1941 when Winston Churchill addressed Congress to urge America's support in the fight against the tyrannical force of the Third Reich. 81 years later this week, it is particularly poignant for me to be present when another heroic leader addresses the Congress in a time of war with democracy itself on the line, Pelosi said, announcing Zelensky's visit this week. So again, uh, Zelensky's president also gave a boost to the Biden-Harris administration's effort to provide Ukraine with assistance, military, economic, and humanitarian in the face of opposition from conservatives on Capitol Hill who want to cut off the spigot of USA when Republicans take over the House next year. Hours before Zelensky's speech, uh, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, a conservative firebrand, said U.S. taxpayers are being, uh, well, I can't say the word, so um, assaulted, maybe harassed, but, you know, you guys can see that. By lawmakers who provide billions of dollars in foreign aid. So, of course, the shadow president has to come to Congress and explain why he needs billions of Americans taxpayer dollars for the 51st state, Ukraine. This is absurd. Put America first. Now, look, I'm not a big fan of Marjorie Taylor Greene. But uh, she's not incorrect in how fast we're able to crap out billions upon billions of dollars for Ukraine. You would think the United States being this bastion of liberty and freedom and diplomacy would urge for a ceasefire, urge for diplomacy, stop the conflict from escalating from out of control. But, you know, we got money for war. We just don't have money for the American people. We have money for tanks, planes, artillery shells, assault weapons, but we don't have money for Medicare for all, student debt forgiveness, uh, housing security, uh, investing into our infrastructure affordable education. We don't have money for that, but we have money for war. And if you are a Democratic or Republican voter, please explain to me in detail why we can't have Medicare for all. If you're a diehard liberal who tells me I got to be pragmatic because I got to vote against Trump, or if you're a diehard Republican voter tell me, oh, we fight for freedom, please explain to me, where are we getting all this money from? How do we get this money? And if we're able to crap out Money like this, like, I mean, fast. I mean, it's super fast. How come we can't do Medicare for all? How come we can't do student debt forgiveness? I mean, obviously, something is amiss here. But the American people have been successfully brainwashed for a very, very long time.
It's 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 impressive. It's impressive how clownish Americans are. And I want to quote read a quote from uh, Edward who says this. Shout out to Edward Heller. But Americans are brainwashed into thinking there's uh, some difference between giving endless money to a proxy war you've been hoodwinked into supporting. It is different than giving money to Americans. There you go. Let's see. So there you go. Shout out to Edward. Good to see you here. Shout out to all of our moderators as well. So, look, I want to pull up this video here. This is where former representative Tulsi Gabbard, she's on Tucker Carlson's show, in regards towards how much money Congress, both parties, mind you, are giving money to the war machine. Now, obviously, I have to agree with Tulsi on this. We have a system where we have unchecked corruption. I want to share it with all of you. Congressman, thank you so much for coming on. Let's you, get it started. I, I, this, Sorry, hold on. I meant to say, uh, let's get it started right here. So let's play it. Congressman, thank you so much for coming on. You, Thanks. I, I, this makes me worried on many levels, but as a process question, everyone in that room, members of Congress, both Republican and Democrats, seem so seized by emotion that you were wondering, like, where are the wise people making decisions in the long-term interest of the United States? I didn't see any of them. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing as I was watching that speech. And it really it really is kind of the manifestation in front of our very eyes of a whole lot of hypocrisy because you have the Biden administration's whole foreign policy is essentially based on democracies and autocracies. We've got to divide the world between these two categories and the U.S. is going to lead the charge for democracies to defeat the autocracies. And so they have said, hey, Ukraine is a thriving democracy and Zelensky is this hero that is protecting this democracy, which is why Biden says we'll do everything within our power to support him. And oh, by the way, we're going to send uh, almost a uh, hundred billion of American taxpayer dollars to go and support this defense of democracy. But when you actually look at what Zelensky's democracy yeah. is, you see uh, no freedom of the press. He has shut down any media that he does not control, his government does not control. He has gotten political opposition uh, arrested, made sure that that's happened. As you mentioned, he shut down the biggest Ukraine church uh, in the country. And, and I found this quote today. He has actually threatened to punish, quote, any Christian caught worshiping in unapproved ways. Oh, so on. this is the democracy that they are saying, well, we need all of your money, our money, taxpayer dollars to go and defend. This is their shining example of democracy. It's no surprise then when we look at what's happening here at home, Tucker, and it's no surprise how we see the political and power elite so easily and willing to undermine our own democracy. Under now, here's something that needs to be addressed, especially with uh, Zelensky's government, and no one will talk about this or corporate media used to talk about it. They won't talk about the fact that, you know, under the Obama Biden administration, there was a coup that took place that removed the previous leadership in Ukraine. And there was some economic instability happening there. And what corporate media no longer also talks about is how you have people in the dynastic families of the Republican and Democratic establishment that have invested in a lot of gas and oil pipelines in Ukraine. Now, right now. Russia is still being sanctioned, and in response, what I think many uh, in the establishment probably know and are willing to allow happen, Russia turned off the gas line that it provides towards the European Union. Because this is a surprise again to a lot of people, but people don't notice Russia is sitting on a treasure trove of a lot of natural gas and fossil fuels. And Russia provides a lot of that for the European Union. And as this war continues on and as we enter into the frigid months or of January and February, um, it's quite clear a lot of people are going to be cold. Uh, and we all know that inflation is still rising up. It's just it's it's madness and stupidity all around. And you'd think the media would say something, but they won't. They can't undermine our own freedoms, abusing their power to achieve their own political interests because they look to Zelensky's democracy and they see a reflection and an opportunity for themselves. I just don't understand how members of Congress could know that this guy is arresting Christian priests, seizing churches, banning an entire denomination and not some, it's not Scientology. This is like an ancient denomination. How can they endorse that? I don't understand. And they're Americans? Like, what is this? Tucker, it's called money. It's also called for the military industrial complex. 
Bring Jimmy Dore back on your show. He'll explain it to you. I think it, it shows a pure dereliction of duty, frankly, on so many of these members of Congress from both parties who are so hooked into and controlled by the war machine in Washington, the military industrial complex, that they will sit there. You know, they, they took a pledge to uphold our Constitution, to support and defend the safety, security and freedom of the American people. And yet they're just sitting there clapping and cheering on this guy who uses fancy words like democracy and freedom and aren't looking at the facts of what's really going on and have no idea where our taxpayer dollars are going. And as you said, could not define what is our objective that serves the interests of the American people. It's it's scary how irrational it is. It, it actually really yeah. worries me. Now, of course, corporate media is going to smear uh, Tulsi Gabbard's talking points because she showed up on Tucker Carlson's show. But I have to agree with her. She is correct on just how insane a two-party system is. So when I say, you know, money is corrupting our democracy, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are owned by special interest groups, lobby groups, Wall Street, the military-industrial complex, the prison-industrial complex. I want to pull up this tweet here, too, because, again, if you want to know about the state of affairs in America, here's what's happening. Right here before all of us, right before our eyes. Shout out to uh, Primo Radical who posted this. U.S. taxpayer dollars are being laundered through Lockheed, Raytheon, Northrop, and Boeing. While homeless Americans freeze to death this Christmas weekend. And Chicago is being hit hard by a snowstorm. And it's going to get very cold. It's going to get below uh, 10 degrees. There I say it's going to reach into the negatives. Negative four possibly. That's how bad it is. Shout out to also Garland Nixon, who also tweeted this out. Breaking news. White House insiders leak that the money saved by screwing rail workers out of sick pay will be used to replace torn and damaged copies of Mein Kampf for Ukraine Nazis because morale on the front lines is critical to military success. Folks, we live in a clown show. We have money for war, but nothing for the American people. Now, I wish that things would get better, but I know that the progressive Democrats won't do a goddamn thing. I know that the Biden-Harris administration won't do a damn thing. Be curious to see if the Republicans, which I doubt when they take over the House, uh, will do something different. But I'm not going to hold my breath because, let's face it, relying on anyone in the Republican Party or Democratic Party to do the right thing, well, it's called being a sucker. And I'm tired of being associated with that abusive relationship. So there you go.